Good afternoon, everybody. This is Gabe Cohen. I'm GuideStar Senior Director of Marketing Communication. Thank you for joining us for our first impact call of 2017. If this is your first impact call, thanks for joining us. And if this is a return visit, welcome back. Um, Adrian, you want to go ahead and go to the next slide here? Um, as always, we want our impact calls to be interactive. What you're seeing on the screen there is uh, the questions pane from the GoToWebinar interface. At any point in the webinar today, just go ahead and type your question in there. We're going to save time at the end of it uh, to answer any questions that we may have coming in. Also, if you'd rather, feel free to follow along on Twitter. Our handle is at GuideStarUSA, and you can use the hashtag GSImpactCall. Next slide. Joining me for today's impact call is our President and CEO, Jacob Harold, our Vice President of Strategic Partnerships, Adrian Bordone, and our Vice President of Strategy and Finance, Niz Cruseri. With that, I'll turn it over to Jacob. Uh, terrific. Thanks, Gabe, and, and welcome, everyone. Um, really glad to have you with us today. For those of you who have not joined us for an, an impact call, this is part of GuideStar's efforts to ensure a very proactive engagement with all of our stakeholders. Um, and in a way, it, it, it helps to force us to make sure that we're communicating actively with all of you to let you know what we're learning, what we're up to, um, what's been happening, um, and to create a mechanism for you to engage with us and ask questions, provide feedback. Um, and so we hope that you enjoy it. It will be about half an hour, and today Adrian Miz will be leading most of the conversation. Um, if we can go ahead and skip to the next slide, um, and then one more. Uh, and just a reminder for those of you who have not been oh, back, actually. Um, to the, there we go. Um, for those of you who uh, have not been on one of our impact calls, the, the very quick summary of GuideStar's strategy is to be the central platform for data in the nonprofit sector. And a core um, part of that is gathering data from many different sources. Um, from those of you on the call who are nonprofits, um, but also from uh, stakeholders of various kinds, from funders and others. And then to distribute that information through a variety of channels. And most of you are probably familiar with GuideStar.org and our 8 million users that use our, our core data distribution channel, which is our website. But Adrian today will talk about um, some of the other ways that our data is flowing out um, into the field for use by everyone from nonprofits to individual donors to journalists to researchers. Um, so thank you for, for joining us today. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it right on over to Adrian uh, to share um, updates from his side. Thanks, Jacob. Um, so I want to start with a quick poll. Uh, you should have an opportunity to respond to this question. Have you ever found nonprofit information powered by GuideStar on a website or app other than GuideStar.org. You take a moment and uh, answer this question real quick. That will help us understand the awareness that our uh, attendees have for this functionality. Great. So um, about just over 50%, about 50-50 here. Some of you have seen this before. Some of you haven't. Um, it's an exciting uh, way in which uh, nonprofit data becomes available to an ever-increasing group of donors and supporters of the sector. Uh, as, you, as Jacob mentioned, we have the opportunity to aggregate and distribute data to our um, these, this data distribution network. And you're going to see a sort of snapshot of who that looks like today. Um, just over 200 organizations are pulling our data into their web environment to inform and provide insights to their, um, to their users. And what's really exciting about what happened at the end of 2016 is that we added a new partner. Um, Facebook came on board, and we think that um, when you combine the volume and quality of use and in, uh, in engagement that Facebook brings, as well as some of our other premier partners that you see listed here, Amazon, Smile, PayPal, Google, et cetera, um, we really are excited to be able to be helping to amplify the voice of the sector 
to an ever-increasing group of users and individuals who are looking to learn more about the great work that you're doing in the communities that you serve. So one of the things that's of significant interest um, to us and to you, uh, as well as to the, the community of stakeholders, is the ability to provide a more robust snapshot of what it is that we are doing in the sector to achieve the results that are changing lives. And you all know this as our profile program. This is ways in which organizations can claim and update their profile to be able to provide that uh, more granular and uh, those insights to those folks who want to learn more about us. You know that there are four levels of profile, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And for those who are relatively new to our impact calls, you may recall that our platinum um, seal rolled out last May to some early adopters. Um, we are really thrilled if you see on this chart on the left that um, we're seeing a, a predictable increase in every level of profile holder. Um, but our platinum increased uh, just over by about 500 organizations from Q3 to Q4. You see on the right-hand side that um, some intelligence we're gathering from those 1,600 organizations. So we have about just over four uh, metrics per organization. And you will, um, we are monitoring closely this number at the bottom, the 71% number. Essentially, this shows that um, the common results catalog that we publish and make available to organizations who want to capture their results and publish them on their GuideStar profile, um, which has about 800 results in it, is increasingly able to um, reflect the needs of the community of practice. So 71% of the organizations have found a result in that catalog that reflects their, uh, the success that they're seeing in their community. Of course, that means that 29% are adding results which of course you can do um, to the catalog. And our commitment is to find those results that are being added and supplement the catalog over time so that we are increasingly offering a place that everyone can find something that reflects their success. Um, one other note I'll mention here is that in addition to the 1,600 organizations that have gotten a platinum, uh, we also have over 700 organizations who've submitted results but have not yet published those results. So we have over 30 percent, uh, we can see a 30 percent increase um, for those organizations who still um, sort of determining if the results that they're uh, submitting to their GuideStar profile are, in fact, the results they want to share with the public. So we're thrilled with where we are. We have um, some, broad, uh, some aggressive goals for 2017. We have lots of ways in which we can support the community of practice, and we have uh, the opportunity to really um, increasingly drive adoption of these profile levels in order to improve the level of intelligence that we can provide to donors and stakeholders in the field. So we have a second uh, poll question that we'll uh, initiate, and then we'll jump into some of our financials. Uh, so I know that we have over 200 people who have registered for today's uh, webinar, and much, but just over half of you are with nonprofit organizations. This may apply to you most directly. Have you updated your organization's GuideStar nonprofit profile? Forgive me as I open my polling results. Got another 10, 15 seconds here, and we are closing those results. <clears throat> Fantastic. So about 20% of you um, are right where you want to be. Um, for those of you who want to update uh, your profile level and get a little assistance, please reach out to us. Um, uh, go to our go to the um, the location on the GuideStar.org website. Um, the those who could use some help, we're here for you as well, both through the community, um, which is a fantastic resource, as well as some individual team members that can be available to get you where you need to be. Um, so great response here. Really appreciate all the interest and adoption of this. We're really trying to do this for you and for the community at large. Um, and without further ado, let me shift over to Ms. Great. Thanks, Adrian. Um, as Jacob alluded to some information that gets shared on our website, and also Adrian mentioned information that gets shared on other people's websites, let me show you some specifics about the numbers um, and the metrics that we calculate. So the top um, part of this 
page shows you the number of users as well as you know registered users that come to our website, and that is an, on an upward trend. Um, you know, we revise some of our registration on our website, so hopefully we can learn about our users and understand their needs so that we can better um, serve all of you that come to GuideStar.org. On the bottom left is our um, the network, the data distribution network of the other websites that Adrian had shown, of which Facebook is the most recent one. Um, there was a slight uh, decline in that in Q4, uh, notwithstanding the big addition of Facebook. And so we're monitoring that closely in terms of the overall numbers and have been working on some new marketing messages and um, competitive analysis. So we hope to um, turn that around in 2017. On the bottom right is our GuideStar for Grants, or G4G applications, as you see there. That has also been on an upward trend. And I won't steal Adrian's thunder. He's going to be talking about this more in our lessons learned coming up shortly. Next slide, please. Um, you will see this uh, slide has a lot of information. And I don't uh, plan to go through all of it today. But you will have this when we circulate the slides. A big part of, you know, I've been talking a lot about metrics, and this is GuideStar's updated theory of change. On the left, um, kind of left to right, you'll see all the inputs and outputs and enablers to GuideStar through which we track the metrics that you've seen on the last two pages. And then on the right of this theory of change, which maps to the data supply hub diagram that Jacob walked through initially, um, you see the outcomes and the impacts that we're trying to strive for on a long-term basis. Um, the information on the right is what we've been working on. Um, and we realize that before we can start collecting that information, we actually need to make sure that our theory of change accurately reflects our work. Uh, for those of you that have been on prior impact calls, you will have known that we worked to refresh our three-year strategy last year. And so we wanted to make sure that our theory of change accurately reflects that new strategy, which is what you see here. And you know, honestly, is an ongoing work in process. And we're continuing to get feedback on it um, and continuing to revise it as well. So hopefully, our plan is in the second half of 2017 is to run a mixed method, so quantitative and qualitative survey, to gather that information of evidence on the right. So looking at some um, evidence um, indicators for GuideStar's long-term outcomes, which is to what extent we influence decisions um, made in the philanthropic sector, to what extent dollars um, are increasing as a result of GuideStar tools and services, and then also the time and dollar saved um, from efficiencies created uh, by GuideStar's resources. So stay tuned for that uh, towards the end of 2017. Shifting to financials, um, as Adrian had alluded to, you know, we, we had a lot of great success on the prog programmatic side. Um, on the financial side, it's been a little bit slower to be reflected here, as you can see. What I've shown is our unrestricted revenue. Um, we, the, key, the key message I want to share with you here is that you know, Adrian joined last year, so we have new leadership on our revenue team. We have new systems. And what we learned is that we were going to be challenged uh, kind of mid last year to hit our revenue numbers. And so we um, managed our expenses, did a mid-course correction on those. And we, were, um, uh, we, were, we ended up the year on a break-even basis. And so our change in unrestricted net assets, as you see in that third set of columns, is zero. Um, our net asset change overall is um, uh, negative. Um, and so we are, sorry about that, we're just going to make sure there's a little bit of a delay in terms of what you see and what we see in our screens. There you go. Um, and so overall, big picture here is that you know with better systems and better team members, we were able to manage our revenues and our expenses um, in 2016. Shifting to our balance sheet, um, we um, maintained our liquidity uh, at $2 million, our cash levels. Um, but but you know, it, we did not meet our target, um, as I mentioned, given the revenue um, uh, projections and actual, actual results that we achieved in 2016. Um, so overall, um, you know, this trend looks 
uh, um, is somewhat on a downward trend over the last year, but I'm pleased to say that over the last three years, since in 2014, our net assets were actually negative. So we've actually rebounded quite a bit in 2015 and 2016 from, a, a, if you look at a longer term perspective, um, our total net asset position has strengthened. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over to Adrian. Thanks, Ms. So one of the areas that we want to share as a lesson learned from 2016 has to do with the tool that we released uh, that we pulled out of early adopter status and pushed to the marketplace. And it's referred to as GuideStar for Grant Applications, or G4G. Some of you may historically recall this. It was referred to as Simplify while we were part of the Simplify partnership. Um, that partnership was successful in helping to birth that tool, and we're really thrilled to bring it to the market. Um, the, the lesson learned for 2016, however, which is some of you may uh, be familiar with this in your own work, is that we really um, anticipated that we would be able to pivot um, in the level of enthusiasm that we were seeing in the marketplace. Every time we um, shared what this tool does, which is essentially the ability for an organization to auto-populate a grant application by using data that is captured on their profile, their nonprofit profile, this would be free to the organization and available at a nominal, small, low cost to a foundation. Um, every time we uh, share this capability with the community at large, we um, really uh, receive very enthusiastic and positive response. However, uh, and what that did, as you noticed in, um, in some of Ms.'s slides, we are seeing an uptick in G4G adoption, but what we were really hoping for is an uptick in the hundreds, not in the tens. Um, and so we're really circling back to make sure that we understand the implications from a user experience. We know that foundations have a lot on their plates. We know that they're eager to drive uh, greater efficiency and effectiveness and reduce the amount of time spent by organizations in completing grant applications, but we really know that we have to circle back and get um, make sure we're there uh, when they are looking for this tool to make it available through these grants management software vendors. So our software vendors are, of course, our partners. We are strengthening those partnerships every day. Um, hopefully, uh, as we report out on the adoption of this tool later in 2017, you'll be able to see an increased um, number of partners, uh, foundations who are deploying this, and we'll be able to see that this is something that's leading to time savings in the application process. I'll just note that on today's call, we have um, well over 200 attendees, um, and the vast majority of those attendees are donors from foundations uh, self-identified in our registration process as donors, grants managers, and grant seekers, essentially leadership or representatives from the development offices of nonprofit organizations. We would encourage you to reach out to us to learn a, bit, a little bit more about this tool and so that there's an opportunity for you to help us socialize the value of this and bring additional foundations on board. It is universally adored where folks have chosen to move in this direction. We're just struggling to make sure the word gets out properly. Just as a um, recall, we will recall, uh, Jacob, several of you, if you've been on this, uh, an impact slide, uh, excuse me, an impact um, presentation before, you will have seen this, and certainly Jacob mentioned this in the uh, beginning of his presentation. The real value that GuideStar offers in this regard is being able to connect donors on the far right um, with through partner channels, which is that um, GuideStar website piece, right? And, the sort of uh, middle right of this slide. So the ability for GuideStar to capture profile data from organizations, you recall the profile data that I highlighted earlier in today's impact call, is really being increasingly provided by organizations to strengthen the value proposition that they're bringing to bear in the marketplace. We are pushing that data through our GuideStar for Grant application tool set into our partner environments. These are our grants management software vendors like Blackballed, MicroEdge, Flux, et cetera. Um, and then making that intelligence uh, and the auto population functionality available to our donors and our nonprofits. So it's easing 
the burden of submitting that common data information to an, for, for an application from a nonprofit perspective, and it's increasing the likelihood that that um, information is accurate and consistent uh, for the donor. So really, in, in, in many ways, that Five Star for Grants applications is a fulfillment of a promise that's illuminated here graphically, um, and we really hope to get your assistance in increasing, uh, to get the word out in the marketplace that this is available um, and, and, and ready to go live for, uh, in, in, uh, with foundations in a community near you. So we'll pause now. These are set up as 30-minute calls. We're about 22 minutes in. It is Valentine's Day, so we may choose to uh, let you off a little early if some of you um, need to get some last-minute shopping done. Um, Dave, you want to transition to some Q&A, which I'm sure is showing up on the right-hand side here? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Adrian, and thanks, everybody, for your participation thus far. Um, again, we're, we've got some great questions. If anybody else wants to ask a question, just use that question pane on the uh, uh, GoToWebinar interface. I'm going to start here with a question that we have asking if um, any other orgs, organizations have, have started doing impact calls on their own. Jacob, what, what do we know about that thus far? Yeah, there, there are a handful of other organizations that are, that are similarly holding a regular event like this to just share what's happened and what, what, we're, what uh, that organization is learning. Most recently, the Center for High Impact Philanthropy at the University of Pennsylvania um, started doing their version of, uh, of an impact call. So there, there are a handful of cases out there, um, and we think for many organizations it's really good practice. It, it really depends. If you're a local community center, you may want to do a just quarterly in-person meeting, but especially for those organizations that have constituents spread around the country or around the world, we found this to be a very useful way to just have a conversation with our stakeholders, um, and, and it's encouraging for us to see that others are, are thinking the same thing. Great, and I think that this is going on maybe our 13th impact call at this point, so we're certainly finding them successful. Uh, Maria has a question here, and it is, as a new CEO, what is the advantage of being part of GuideStar? My predecessor did not elaborate on the rationale with me. I think that's a really great question. Um, sure, and I also saw that Maria had a, another question about the different levels um, that, that Adrian mentioned, and as did Ms. of bronze, silver, gold, platinum. And, and the basic logic is that as you go up that ladder, you're sharing more information. Um, we simply want to create an incentive for nonprofits to tell their own story in a systematic way to their many stakeholders. And the basic idea is that bronze information is operational data about your organization and its people. Silver is up-to-date financial data because um, often the data that comes from the IRS can be quite out of date. We want to be as current as possible. At the gold level, it is um, what we call qualitative programmatic data, and by that we mean sentence answers to questions like, what's your goal and what's your strategy? These are really important for something Adrian talked about, which is auto-populating um, foundation applications and proposals. Um, <clears throat> so these questions are very similar to the ones you would see on many foundation uh, proposal forms. And then the platinum level is quantitative programmatic. So these are the results metrics that, um, that Adrian talked about, where it's an actual number. Um, whether it's the number of acres protected by an environmental group or the proportion of people served by, um, uh, by a job training program who managed to get a job after getting trained. Um, so it, our hope is and our belief is that any nonprofit could get all the way up to platinum. And again, that's totally free. Um, but it requires that an organization is clear about what they're trying to accomplish and how they track their own progress. So it can be a little bit of work. Um, but those organizations that already have that clarity can get all the way up to platinum in a couple of hours. Um, and for others that where maybe this might inspire a conversation with your board or your staff to make sure that you're in agreement about what metrics are appropriate for your work, um, we think that's great. Um, and we're, we hear often from nonprofits that say the process of going through um, to achieve a higher level on GuideStar has been very valuable for their own internal um, alignment. Yeah, I, Adrian, I'm, I'm hoping that you can kind of elaborate on the second part of that question, which is how many people are seeing this information, and, and not just on GuideStar.org, but then also on that data distribution network that you talked about earlier? That's a great question, Gabe. I, I think one of the things that um, Maria's question um, gets to the heart of is 
what is it that you know why is this data important to the world and increasingly we're we're seeing that folks are using GuideStar and the profile that exists for an organization that they find on GuideStar is their first impression of that organization. And that may be for a donor, it may be for a stakeholder or a prospective board member, um, but we're really um, increasingly seeing that, uh, you know, for GuideStar.org last year we had 8 million users log in and search for uh, deep dive information on organizations. Um, Increasingly, and uh, you know, the, the funny thing is, I can't quote the most up-to-date number for our data distribution network because the Facebook edition is, we think, going to be significant. However, we know um, it's in the range of 30 million additional people are gaining access to an organization's data through our data distribution network. Um, again, when you look at um, the sort of an organization, if you're on this call and you're leading a nonprofit organization that has a fundraising strategy that reaches beyond friends and family, in other words, you are trying to engage people you do not yet know in helping them understand why you are an important part of the fabric of your community, you have to recognize that those folks might be using GuideStar to learn about your organization. So I would recommend that you, you know, um, take a little bit of time to at least claim your profile and then um, reach out to us if we can help you increasing your seal level from bronze to silver to gold to platinum, as Jacob mentioned. Great, thanks, Adrian. I'm gonna. Um, there's a, a a few different questions that we have here about some of the logistics with updating your profile. So I'm just gonna go over those really quickly. The first is just generally how can you get help if you need help updating your profile? And two good answers for that. The first is you can just email profiles at guidestar.org. Or the second is you can go to our online community simply by clicking on the community tab at the top of our website. And you're going to see a robust amount of information there from our own experts as well as other users that's going to help guide you through that process. Uh, a quick estimate on how long each of those different fields of transparency take to achieve. The bronze takes about 15 to 20 minutes. There's a variety of questions, but nothing too in-depth. Uh, silver level is um, pretty quick if you have an audited financial statement. Just a couple of minutes. All you're doing is uploading that document to get that. The gold level, which is that uh, qualitative impact information that Jacob talked about, if you have something like that similar, which we find a lot of organizations do, that's pretty quick as well. It's just updating that information. If you don't, if it's a new exercise for you, it could be a little bit more time consuming, but certainly one that you'll find value to. And similar answer to Platinum, if you are collecting data about the difference that you're making in the world, the uh, interface that we have set up is only going to take you a few minutes to go through to go ahead and add that information. So you really can get a Platinum field transparency in about a couple of hours. Um, we have uh, a specific question, and we'll, we'll call this the last question of the day so that we can get back, every, get every, let everyone get back to their work, but what if your organization revenue is less than a certain amount, and if the requirement is to only file the IRS 990N, how would you recommend achieving a higher bronze level? Uh, Jacob, you want to speak to that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, any organization, um, whether or not they're required to file a full 990 with the IRS, um, any organization that is registered as a nonprofit with the IRS can achieve any level on GuideStar. Uh, so um, just come to GuideStar and click on update your profile and you know follow the steps there. Um, it is true that those organizations that, that file a 990 that are above a certain size will have more information on you automatically um, just because we already have that information from the 990. So that should only increase the reason why a smaller organization that doesn't have to um, uh, file that uh, through the 990 would want to ensure that their GuideStar profile reflected the full story of their organization for those 8 million users and for the hundreds of other platforms that are that are using our data. Great. Well, thanks so much to all of our participants today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on our Q2 impact call, which will be about three months from now. And also keep an eye out for the third part in our overhead myth webinar series, which is going to be coming out in March. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Valentine's Day.